Hi everyone, Tammy here, Flannel Chick MTV. Welcome to my channel. Now, based on your Instagram post, I know that some of you are already riding dirt and wearing shorts and short sleeves and are well into your mountain bike season. But for those of us here in Alberta, we are still months away uh, from riding dirt. We're in the depths of winter still and probably won't ride, be riding our bikes on dirt for another two months or so. So around this year, I start to get a little itchy for the season to start. And I start thinking about what clothing, what gear, what bike parts I might need to replace for the upcoming season. And this led me to thinking about today's video. Because one of the common questions that I often hear is, what do I need to try mountain biking for the first time? What kind of gear do I need? What kind of clothes do I need? And since this channel is so much about breaking down as many mental barriers as possible to get you out on the mountain bike, one of those barriers might actually be the ideas you have about what you think you need to try mountain biking for the first time. So let's bust some of those beliefs today because I'm here to tell you that your clothing and your gear shouldn't be an obstacle. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how very little I think you actually need to try mountain biking for the very first time. So let's talk about what is non-negotiable, what you absolutely need to go for your first ride, and all the other things that are personal preference or wish list or optional, but certainly not deal breakers for you taking your very first mountain bike ride this season. My entire first season on a mountain bike, I pretty much had nothing. I wore the clothes that I already had in my closet, I borrowed a bike, and I borrowed gear. Now, if you watched my first couple of videos, I shared my backstory about how I came into mountain biking and how that as a very reluctant rider, I really wasn't prepared to invest a single penny on gear. And in a lot of ways, I'm actually really glad that I did that because what I discovered is that there are so many options in terms of clothing, in terms of gear, in terms of bikes. And it's really impossible to know what you're going to want, what's going to work for you and your body type, what's going to work for the types of trails that you eventually end up riding, and what you even like until you've ridden for a bit. So before we get to the nitty gritty, there are two assumptions I'm making in sharing this information with you today. If you are trying to figure out what you need to go out on your first mountain bike ride, that likely means you are a brand new rider. And what that means, hopefully, is that you're going to be on a trail that is made for beginners, such as an easy green trail with very little grade that's smooth and with few obstacles. So what I suggest that you need for your very first trail ride assumes that you aren't going to be riding any gnarly, steep, or technical trails, or trails where you run a bit of a higher risk as a brand new rider to get hurt on, to crash, to fall. Of course, as the trail difficulty increases, then the bare bones gear changes for a lot of us. And in a future video, I'm gonna share what gear I use when I'm riding a cross country trail or an enduro trail, or when I'm riding at a downhill bike park. But for today, we're starting from the premise that this is your very first ride and that you are riding a dirt path, a green trail, or maybe even just playing around for the first time on a mountain bike in a grassy field. Now the second assumption I'm making in sharing this information with you in terms of what you need for your first ride is that you already know how to ride a bike. That's not to say that you know how to mountain bike, but that your first mountain bike ride ever is not to learn how to ride a bike for the first time. If your first mountain bike ride ever involves you learning to ride a bike, then some of the gear that I mentioned today as optional might be more important to you on your first ride. And by the way, if you are learning to ride a bike for the very first time this season, I would so love to hear from you because I think that's awesome. And I would love to hear about why you decided to learn to ride a bike now. I'd love to hear about how it goes. And I want you to know that I am cheering you on from here. Okay, 
So let's dive in. Let's start with the short list. And that is what I'm going to call the non-negotiable list. And in my opinion, there really are only two non-negotiables you need for your very first mountain bike ride. So let's get this out of the way because once these two things are checked off your list, you are good to go. Unless you want to add any of the other things we'll be talking about in the optional list. So what's on the non-negotiable list? Well, first and foremost, a bike. Now I'm not going to get into the type of bike or the type of features that you might want to look for on a bike. Because this is your first ride ever, your first mountain bike ride, I think there are two things that are really important. One, that the bike is in good working condition, and two, that the bike fits you. Now, whether you are renting a bike from a shop or borrowing a bike from a friend, then there'll be someone there to help you with some of the setup. And some of the things that setting up your bike means includes adjusting the position maybe of your brake levers, adjusting your seat post height, adjusting your sag and your rebound, you don't need to know what that means, and making sure your tire pressure is appropriate. Now, if I were you going out for my first ride ever, I really wouldn't give too much time worrying about this. Chances are if you're riding on a dirt path or in a field or on an easy green trail, your basic settings are probably gonna be just fine. And the truth is a lot of these settings are really personal anyways. And it's not until you've ridden a fair bit that you're actually even gonna be able to tell the difference. And you're not even gonna really know what you like until you've ridden a bit because you don't have a frame of reference. And that's okay because if you're riding with friends or you're taking a lesson or you're renting a bike from a shop, there's gonna be someone there who can help you out with these. Now, although I wouldn't get too caught up with the bike specifics for your first ride, I will say that if you take up mountain biking and you ride more, you will develop some preferences. So for instance, for me when I started riding, I didn't have a dropper post. But now the type of riding that I do, a dropper post has become non-negotiable for me. I'm riding a lot of terrain with a lot of elevation, and I'm constantly going between climbing and descending. However, for your first ride, it's probably fair to say if you're on a green trail, you're not going to be working with tons of elevation changes. And so not having a dropper post for your first few rides, for your first season, or ever really, is not a deal breaker. So again, for your first ride, a bike that fits, that's in good working conditions, and where the basic settings of your cockpit have been adjusted for your height and your weight, and you're good to go. Now, the second non-negotiable for your first mountain bike ride ever is a helmet. Now, I would say for your first mountain bike ride ever, a half shell, a helmet like this, that doesn't have a chin guard or a chin bar, that doesn't cover your entire face is perfectly appropriate. Now in one of my future videos I'm going to talk about how I choose my gear. When do I wear my half shell or when do I don my full face? How do I decide what kind of gear to wear depending on the type of riding that I'm doing? But for today's purposes and for your first ride ever I would say a half shell is perfectly good. In fact I would say that even if your first ride ever is going to be at a downhill park, a bike park, and you're riding the intro green trails, my feeling is a half shell is probably perfectly fine as well. If you're renting your gear from a bike park, they will likely have full face helmets that you can rent. In my last video, Game Changers for Beginner Mountain Bikers though, I spoke about how in my opinion, green trails at a bike park are often no more difficult than green trails outside of a bike park. And in some ways, I think they actually can be a little more predictable. Because bike park trails have uh, uh, trail crews, the surfaces tend to be tended. They tend to be smoother, they're free of obstacles. Whereas when we're riding on our local trails, maybe in the backcountry for instance, mother nature can wreak havoc on a trail. A green trail can turn into a pretty spicy blue trail simply because of erosion, wind, runoff, fallen trees, and obstacles getting turned up. 
So if you have a half shell bike helmet for your first ride, I would say you're good to go. That being said, of course, you want to wear whatever and as much protection as you want and need to feel really good about riding. You don't want to be thinking about your gear when you're riding. So in my opinion, those are the two non-negotiables. If you have a good working bike and a bike that fits you and a decent helmet, you can go for your first mountain bike ride today. So let's move on and talk about optional gear, optional clothing, um, the wish list, I guess, for your first mountain bike ride ever. And we'll start with clothing because I don't know what to wear is a very real problem. Let's talk bottoms. So in terms of bottoms, there is nothing special that is needed as long as you are comfortable. Now, I wear mountain bike shorts at this point, but when I first got started, again, I wasn't making a lot of investment in my rides. I really didn't think I would ever enjoy mountain biking. And so I wore what I had. And shorts, yoga pants, and even jeans are perfectly okay for riding in. Um, now, I prefer to have a layer between me and the sun and me and the ground. And so when I'm making choices about what to wear, I tend to decide to wear more clothing than less. So longer shorts as compared to shorter shorts. Um, this just allows me that added protection from sun, from bugs, and from the ground. If I happen to crash, if I happen to graze up against a tree or a branch, that layer of clothing can just make a little bit of a difference between just getting a little scrape or getting a deeper cut. Now, what do you wear on the top? Again, this is really a personal preference. You want to be comfortable and you just want to be able to move freely. Again, for me, I'm all about the layer between me and the elements. And so when I ride, I do tend to wear longer sleeves. Even when it's warm out, I tend to choose to either wear a full sleeve or a three quarter inch sleeve. I like that little extra protection. I don't have to worry about reapplying sunscreen every hour when I'm wearing sleeves. I don't have to worry about bug bites in the same way. And I don't have to worry about if I do crash, um, that uh, terrible road rash uh, situation uh, where you're picking gravel out of your skin. And so I tend to wear long sleeves, but again, there are a lot of people who are perfectly comfortable riding in a tank top or riding in a t-shirt. Now, I don't wear bike specific tops. I tend to just wear an athletic top, something that you would wear to go to yoga or you'd go to the gym. Um, and um, they have served me uh, really well. They're stretchy so that when I want to put elbow pads underneath, there's a lot of give and I can do that. So again, wear a t-shirt, wear a tank top, wear a long sleeve shirt, wear a sweatshirt. Whatever you're comfortable in, whatever you have should be good enough for you to have your first ride in and maybe even spend your first season in. So let's talk about eyewear and we'll talk about sunglasses specifically. Um, although this is optional, I really would suggest if you don't have a pair of sunglasses that you borrow a pair and that if you just have a pair of sunglasses that you wear to drive in or that you wear to walk in, that you might want to consider packing them and wearing them for your first ride. Because in when we're mountain biking, sunglasses really offer two different kinds of protection. First of all, they're protecting your sun from the eyes, obviously, from the rays of the sun. They're helping you, um, you know, not be squinting all day and, and getting a headache from the glare of the sun. But another um, benefit is that they protect your eyes from rocks, branches, and dirt that sometimes get um, thrown up as we're riding um, our bikes. So especially if you're following behind someone, it's really easy for them to turn up rocks, for them to turn up sticks that end up um, getting flown in your direction. It's also really easy to not notice low uh, laying branches and when you're going under trees uh, to get hit in the face uh, with a branch and uh, 
hopefully not take that in, in the eyes. So if you have a pair of sunglasses, although I've added it on the optional list because I don't think it should be a deal breaker for you getting out on your first ride, uh, bring them with you. And if you don't have a pair, but you can borrow a pair, any kind of sunglasses will serve at least as some level of protection for you while you're riding. Now something to keep in mind though, if you're riding on an overcast day or in really heavily shaded trees, sometimes our sunglasses can create a disadvantage. If they're too dark, it can make it really difficult um, to follow the trail, to see the obstacles on the trail, or it just simply might just be too dark to see as well as you'll want to see when you're on a new trail. And so keep that in mind. I always wear my sunglasses, but every once in a while I do have to just take them off and put them in my pack because I just can't see the trail well enough. Um, they're too dark, um, it's too overcast. Okay, now the next item on my wish list, optional list, but certainly not a deal breaker for getting out on your first mountain bike ride are mountain bike gloves. Now, why do mountain bikers wear gloves? Um, well. A couple of reasons I think and if there's a third reason that you know of send me a comment um, but the two reasons that I always wear gloves and the reason that you might want to borrow a pair of gloves if you don't have a pair is this is when you get hot and mountain biking is actually a lot of work when you get hot and when your hands start to get sweaty or if you're like me when you're nervous your hands get sweaty gloves can make a really big difference in terms of being able to grip your handlebars and feeling that that grip is secure. So that's one of the biggest reasons that I wear gloves. Now, there's gloves that have different levels of protection. So these gloves, for instance, really are just material. Um, they help with grip. Now they are an added layer between your skin and a tree, if you decide you wanna punch a tree, or your skin and the ground if you happen to crash. But aside from the material layer of protection, these gloves aren't offering a whole lot of protection. But there are gloves that have like rubber on the knuckles and they offer a little more protection, again, if you happen to ride into a tree uh, with your fist. Um, the other reason though, aside from grip, um, that you might want to wear gloves is that very reason that I just mentioned, that it does offer a little bit of protection if you come in contact with the ground or with the tree. But gloves are not a deal breaker. There are some mountain bikers, even downhill racers, who opt not to wear gloves. They feel like they get better contact holding their grips uh, with their bare hands and they opt out of uh, wearing gloves. So you don't need to have gloves for your first mountain bike ride. But if you have someone that you can borrow a pair and they fit, then bring them along. Um, it gives you a chance to see what it's like to ride with gloves versus what it's like to ride without gloves. Now on the glove note, gloves tend to be pretty expensive. So I would not run out and buy a pair of mountain bike gloves for your first mountain bike ride ever. And why? Well, first of all, they are a lot of money. They could easily run you 40, 50, 60 dollars or more for a basic pair of mountain bike gloves. And also, if for whatever reason you decide mountain biking is not for you, they're not really very functional otherwise. And so then you're left with a pair of mountain bike gloves and nothing to do with them. I guess you could give them away. But um, again, not a requirement for your first ride, but those are the two reasons that if you have the option of borrowing a pair, you might wanna bring them along with you. Okay, so now let's talk about footwear, shoes. For your first mountain bike ride ever, mountain bike specific shoes are completely not necessary. And unless you happen to have a money tree in your backyard, I would strongly urge you to not go out and buy mountain bike shoes for your first ride. If you ever get into the market for them, you're gonna discover that they are pretty expensive. And for your first ride especially, they are not needed. In fact, many people never go the route of buying mountain bike specific shoes. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But what you do need is for your toes to be covered. So I would say sandals are a no-no. You won't get the type of support you need while you're learning to stand on your pedals 
in sandals and you certainly won't get the type of protection that you want to have. You may be surprised at the beating your feet can take while riding uh, on a mountain bike and the teeth on your pedals that help you with your grip can be nasty for biting. So what kind of shoes then? Now, if you have a shoe that has a flat bottom, it can give you a better sense, a better base, a better sense of security, help you feel more secure on your pedals. And by that I mean, if you look at my mountain bike shoe, you'll see it's, it's flat. And so, you know, there's no indent in terms of where the arch is. And so, if you have a tennis shoe or if you have a skateboard shoe, like this one, that's flat, this would be a really solid choice for your first mountain bike ride. Um, if you don't have a shoe that's flat like that on the bottom though, I'll say your runners or a pair of hiking shoes are gonna be perfectly fine. I have seen people ride mountain bikes in all kinds of crazy footwear. I've seen people ride mountain bikes in cowboy boots. I've seen people ride mountain bikes in their Burks. I've seen people ride mountain bikes in their Bluntstones, in their tennis shoes, in Crocs. Um, but for your first ride, you want to feel as supported and as comfortable as possible. And so ideally, you're going to be in a shoe that covers your toes for protection and for stability. If you have a shoe that has a flat bottom like that, then that would be a really good choice. And if you don't, then your runners or your hiking shoes. Now, my first season of riding, I wore a really sturdy skateboard shoe, something something like this, and they worked really well. In fact, I loved them. And I only moved to a mountain bike specific shoe because uh, my skateboard shoe didn't hold up very well in the mud and the rain. And so after getting soaked time and time again, after getting muddy and me trying to wash the mud off, they just broke down. They just got, dest they got destroyed. Um, but they served me really, really well. And so um, don't go spend tons of money on a mountain bike shoe for your first ride. Uh, completely unnecessary. Okay, let's talk about protective gear. And I just want to say this is always a very personal decision. Uh, even to this day, sometimes I will turn to whoever I'm riding with and I'll be riding a new trail I haven't ridden on. And I'll be like, mm, do you think I need my elbow pads for this? And the answer is always the same. And I know what the answer is going to be. It's really up to you because it's impossible to know what can happen on a trail. I know expert riders, downhill racers, who've actually been injured on a green trail. And so sometimes weird things happen, flukes happen. And so you just need to make decisions that you feel comfortable with. But what I will say about your first very, uh, your very first mountain bike ride ever, is that if you don't have elbow pads, this is not a deal breaker. This shouldn't be something that keeps you from going on your first ride. But if you can borrow a pair of elbow pads, um, they might just help you feel a little more comfortable on your first ride. It might help you feel a little more secure, a little more protected. And we know that how we feel in terms of our physical security really impacts our mindset and impacts our performance. Now on the note of elbow pads, I know people who never wear elbow pads when they ride, regardless of the difficulty of the trail that they're riding. And I also know people who always wear elbow pads, regardless of the difficulty of trail that they're riding. So I'll just leave that with you. It is very much a personal preference. Now if I'm riding black trails or I'm uh, sessioning features, I would always wear my elbow pads. I carry them with me in my pack if I don't want to wear them climbing. Um, but if I'm riding a green trail, I might opt on a hot day not to wear my elbow pads. But for your first ride, this is another piece of gear that I would say is optional. Let's talk about knee pads. Now, in terms of knee pads, I always wear my knee pads uh, on all of my rides. I think probably 95% of my rides, I'd be wearing knee pads. I have them, they are pretty minimal. These are the ones that I like. They easily fit um, in my pack or I push them down to my ankles if it's too hot when I'm climbing and then I can just pull them up on the descent. Now, 
why I like to wear my knee pads is if I come off my bike, generally it's my body versus my bike that um, causes me the injury, causes me the bruises or the goose eggs. And so when I land on the metal of my bike tends to be when I'm going to get a little bit of an injury. So again, like elbow pads, I guess what I would say is if you have a pair, wear them. If you can borrow a pair, borrow a pair. But if you don't have them and you'll be sticking to smooth green trails with few obstacles like roots and rocks and minimal grade, and you already know how to ride a bike, then not having them shouldn't be a reason not to go out for your first ride. Now the next item on the optional list might be a hip pack or a backpack. If you decide to use a pack for your first ride, I would suggest carrying the smallest one you have that can fit whatever it is you need to carry in it. You'll be working on your balance on your pedals as a new mountain biker. And the less weight that you have on your back, the less weight that you have jiggling around behind you, the better. And the smaller the pack, the less you run the risk of it getting hooked on a, on a low hanging branch. Now, depending on where you are riding and how long you'll be out, you may need to carry more, you may need to carry less, but you will likely need somewhere to store your phone, your wallet, and your keys at the minimum. And if you don't have pockets, you'll need a pack of some kind to do that. As we know, in women's fashion industry, pockets tend to be an issue for us. And so even in the mountain bike industry, lots of times mountain bike pockets don't fit all those things. There's not enough room for our wallet, our keys, and our phone in those pockets, if we have pockets at all. You also might be riding somewhere where you need to carry bear spray. You may want or need sunscreen, bug repellent. You might need a small first aid kit. If you're out for a longer ride, you're definitely gonna need some snacks. And if your bike doesn't have a water bottle cage, you will need somewhere to carry water. So a pack can be really a nice option. When I first started riding, I didn't carry a multi-tool or tire levers with me because if I'm being honest, I wouldn't have known what to do with them anyhow. And so I relied on those uh, that I was riding with to loan me those things if I needed a tool or if I needed a tube. Um, focusing on riding was more than enough for me to think about. And so I didn't have those tools and I didn't carry those tools with me. Now, on that note, if you're riding for the first time and you're taking a lesson, you may be asked to bring some of those things with you, like an air pump or a spare tube or tire levers. Um, but for your first ride ever, if you don't have those things and you can't borrow those things, I would say I certainly wouldn't let that stop you going out. The worst case scenario, there will be someone in your lesson, someone in your group, the coach, who can pitch in if you need any of these things. So like protective equipment, your pack is a very personal choice based on where you ride, the types of trails you ride, the weather, how long you're going out for a ride, and um, the special circumstances or the unique circumstances that you're riding in. If you're riding in places where the weather changes quickly or there's a drastic difference between when you leave in the morning and when you leave in the afternoon, then having a pack can be really nice. It allows you to bring extra layers to take things off and to um, carry extras that if you didn't have a pack, um, you wouldn't have the option of, of bringing with you on your ride. So I hope it's obvious that in my opinion, you really need very little to try mountain biking for the first time. Outside of a bike and a helmet, everything else really is optional for that first ride, or maybe even for your first season. If you can, I really would give some thought to renting and borrowing as much as possible in the beginning. Not only does this take some of the pressure of investment off, but it gives you a chance to try different brands and different setups to get a chance to determine what you like, to determine how much maybe you will be riding, to determine the types of trails you'll be, be riding, and based on that, what you should and what you're prepared to invest in. I hope this video was helpful and took some of the worry out of planning for your first mountain bike ride this season. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you do happen to take your first mountain bike ride, I would love to hear about it. Happy riding, everyone.